Hello, Paul Harvey fans. Dark Eagle's contributions to the Colonials during the American Revolution were many. Had it not been for Dark Eagle, we, Americans, might still be British subjects. Can you imagine that? Stick around after the broadcast and we'll take a closer look at the rest of the story. Here's Paul Harvey. Now, the rest of the story. In 1775, a high-ranking officer of the Continental Army, despite heavy casualties among his troops, almost conquered Canada. The following year, commanding an inferior fleet, that same military genius battled the British to a draw on Lake Champlain. And the year after that, at Saratoga, that same Revolutionary War hero, through sheer strategic brilliance, forced a stunning surrender of the Redcoat forces. Without the contribution of that extraordinary soldier in the first three years of the war, says respected historian George Newman, probably we would have lost the revolution. The soldier's name, his Abnaki Indian name, was Dark Eagle. And now you're going to hear the rest of the story. Dark Eagle had none of the white man's formal military training, but he was a natural warrior. And so precocious was he in the art of combat, quite early in his career as a colonial officer, George Washington emoted the merit of this gentleman is certainly great and promptly offered him his own regiment. As news of his remarkable victories reached the home front, patriots competed to produce adequate superlatives. Many compared Dark Eagle to history's greatest military heroes. In a letter to Samuel Adams, James Warren called him a genius of the battlefield, without equal in modern times, likened his accomplishments to Hannibal's. Engagement after engagement, Dark Eagle displayed his native cunning by avoiding traps laid by the most seasoned British generals, and yet when facing his foe head-on, he personally demonstrated such reckless bravery that troops on both sides thought him a madman. At Saratoga he galloped full speed into the enemy's midst, with his astonishing brigade barely able to keep up. Both he and his horse were shot, the latter fatally, and yet even then, as he lay pinned beneath his fallen steed, his leg crushed, muskets blazing all around him, Dark Eagle continued issuing orders to his men. As the war wore on, Dark Eagle grew disillusioned. Love of the ideals for which the colonists fought and the hope that his sons would one day remember his name with pride had driven him through three desperate years of battle, but frustration with Congress which had chronically underestimated him and underprovisioned his troops, and our alliance with France, of which he had always disapproved, embittered him, until in a manner of speaking, Dark Eagle switched tribes. For once upon a revolution there was an untrained soldier, a mere volunteer who rose to the rank of general on merit alone, a warrior without whom our freedom might never have been won, and yet whose name was destined for dishonor. Because, you see, Dark Eagle was the name given to him by the Abnaki Indian Natanes, who accompanied him on his valiant march to Quebec. But Dark Eagle had an even darker name, one with which he was born, and which, before he died, became synonymous with traitor. For you remember the military genius whom many believed was the finest general in the Continental Army. You remember him as a stone-cold sellout named Benedict Arnold. Only you now know the rest of the story. Some people claim that Benedict Arnold's earning the nickname Dark Eagle was just a sensationalized account of history. Some say it was nothing but a work of fiction. The earliest mention of Benedict Arnold as Dark Eagle that I could locate appeared in the Litchfield Inquirer on October the 29th, 1846. The title of this article was The March Through the Wilderness from Lippard's Lectures on the Romance of the Revolution. George Lippard was a journalist, social activist, playwright, and novelist during the 19th century. Take a look at your screen for a photo of Lippard. He was a friend of Edgar Allan Poe, and, like Poe, he died young. He was just 31 years old. But is, is this story true or not? 
We may never know for sure, but it's obvious that Mr. Harvey believed it was true. I'm Brad Dyson. As Paul Harvey would say, good day.